Welcome back, everybody. Do you even star made the podcast? Episode 8 um, with General Von Doom, and we are going to go through this. So, first of all, how are you doing today, General? I'm doing good. It's good to see you again. It's, it's not like we totally recorded this all in one go. I know. it Exactly. It's totally not like that at all. Ah. But yeah, first of all, first item on the list, radio communication. Okay, it says in brackets server-side hardcore, but I don't really know what that means. Um, random events while traveling the universe, which is pretty self-explanatory. Ship control and usability, which looks pretty brief. And what would we like to see procedurally generating in the universe? And there's a lot of bullet points there. All of these questions are set by people from previous podcasts. Do we have a do we have a party crasher? No. For a minute there I thought we had someone joined us. <laughs> Sorry, mate. What were you saying? Uh I don't know what I was saying now. My bad. My bad. Um so let's get started on the radio communication, shall we? Um There was a call to change the local chat so that it's relative to your player position. Um, It could be limited by range or technology. So maybe you've got to actually fit an antenna that would give you 10 sectors of local chat range. The admins would still be able to see everything and PM will still work on multiplayer. So this is purely to add like an element of role play or a survival to the communications in the game. Well, it could work and might not, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, you could have, like, some sort of global chat, but you'd have to keep it to the game only mm-hmm. and not actually, like, ghost or anything. Yeah. And then you could have this sort of radio communication, so if you're wanting to talk to your local buddies looking for an SOS or something, mm-hmm. then you could send out some sort of message that only local people would be able to read. Yeah. Um, we were actually talking about this earlier with in the previous episode where I went on about satellites sending messages from planets to nearby ships or something. Yeah. So with radio communications, you could actually send out secret messages to your faction buddies mm. in nearby sectors to, and give them orders or just have a nice little chat, I guess. Hmm. Uh, the other thing, of course, is maybe to give people a fleet chat so they can fleet up with their buddies and tap away. I know there's already a PM, but people forget to use it. And there's also a slash F for chat for a faction. I think you can use left shift when you uh, hit enter. And I think it just automatically puts you in faction chat. I'm not sure. Um mm. But, um, but yeah, like some kind of system, like the way we were thinking was just literally to make it a local chat rather than, uh, you know, a, a lot like in EVE Online where if you're in a system, there is a local chat for everyone in that system, you know what I mean? Um, and you would automatically be in that chat, I think, is because you're there. Um, I mean, you could take it one step further and add like voice chat to local chat. Mm. You could. Um, one that you could, might not be able to disable. So if you're talking in TS trying to keep give out secret orders, then the enemy <laughs> might have some sort of technology to intercept your communications. Oh, that's you know? quite meta. You yeah, have to put, exactly. <laughs> you, then they, then <laughs> it patches into your mic. So it's not like a voice thing. It's actually like a intercept. So <laughs> you'd have to mute your mic. And they're disabling you from communicating on TeamSpeak or something if you didn't want to get snooped. So they <laughs> they lock onto your ship and it hacks your client, allowing you to listen in to their mic. I'm not sure if that's really meta. That's a video game on its own right there. Yeah. <laughs> well, Star Maid is a video game of other video games all in one, so it is. It's screw true. it. <laughs> but put that video out there. Okay, so let's get on to the random events whilst traveling the universe. Uh, The ones we've already got bullet pointed are pulled into a wormhole, nebulas break engines or power, 
radiation to crew, to crew, which decreases your crew, exploding suns, which means supernova, lots of light in the entire sector, uh, imploding sun, black holes, which means there's no light in the sector, it's all dark, uh, maybe the sun collapsed. Um, so yeah, what do you think about all of that? Do you have any any more? What do you think? Well, to be honest, random events seem to like happen all the time in any game. Like mm. one second, if you, well, if you're stationary in a single sector, you're gonna see probably all of these random events. To be honest. Well, what I'm thinking is that as you explore the game, you will come to unlock pockets of space that are so far away that there's no other player near you or the only players that are near you are with you so it's sort of you're in your own little group of and your own little well, area it would be nice if it happened in like less populated areas that's what know? i'm saying yeah it could only yeah. happen it could only happen during the process of exploration so any one of these random events could happen on discovery of a new star system but here's the twist once everyone leaves and it despawns if no one built a station there you know what i mean once everyone leaves, the game repairs the sector and it resets to that random state again. Mm. And that's an op that could be an option, you know, so that you could explore more of the game without having to go really far. A bit like how they've doing this battle mode, you know. Maybe you could have an explore mode that gives you an entire star system and there's a random event, like you say, and you've got to survive it somehow through survival... Or... It, would, it would give you like a nice survival mode, I guess. Mm. Well, it would give you different themes of survival as well, because it's almost like everyone starts survival on the planet or maybe in space. But how about starting on a, on a planet that's about to be sucked into a black hole or starting in orbit of a sun that's about got five minutes till it's supernovas, you know. You, you could have all that. Or starting in a ship of your choice... But there's a nebula, and your engines hardly work. And you can't really see, and they're you know, just to mix up the battle mode maybe. Um, being pulled into a wormhole is like you'd have to augment your engines. It's like the game gives you five million thrust blocks, <laughs> and goes you're being sucked into a wormhole, and you've got two choices: fly through it or try to build your way out of it. <laughs> <laughs> You know. Mm, well, your inventory might be full anyway, so. True. Might not be a good idea, but being pulled into a wormhole, mm. and if your engines are not powerful enough, mm -hmm. then you might not be able to escape, and you'll have to go all the way through it, and hope you don't get trapped, which you won't, because that would be tall pants, to be honest. Well, apparently, then you don't it would actually take you to a random place in the universe. Well, perhaps. I, I've heard that a mechanic that they were playing with was an unexplored pocket. Yeah, probably. if you well, one thing that might or, happen, it, you might lose. Thing is, blocks. with wormholes, it could actually. Yeah. Oh, we've lost him. So we're going to move on now to ship control and usability. Um, basically that's like hopping into a cockpit instead of walking all the way to the core or um, attacking attaching a weapons computer to a cockpit so that when you get in there you're not looking through a wall you're looking through a cockpit or maybe multiple views with the linking system well to be honest cockpits <coughs> would only work with um, fighters yep think about it mm. large ships you don't want to have like this tiny cockpit inside your ship it'll, it'll just be like having a core to be honest yeah so it should be optional for like fighters for some sort of design choice but what about the attaching of a weapons computer like with a light to get the color on the projectile so you could actually designate when you enter a weapons computer where you're looking out because at the moment you, it's really kind of happenstance, you know. If you get into it, it's sort of like looking through the ship where it is, you know. You, you, you. It's like looking out of a core, basically, isn't it? Especially if you're trying to use a broadside computer, that's where it's most tricky. Be honest, you can get cockpits anyway. Just use a camera and then surrounding a glass door, you got a cockpit. No, there isn't really for much turning a... for when you're turning right, for example, if you if you've got a gun that's facing to the right. 
and uh, you've got to get into that with R from astronaut mode. Maybe you've got uh, someone's flying the ship, you're you're in astronaut mode on the ship, and he goes, "Hey, shoot my broadsides! Weapons computers right there!" And you get in it, and all you can see is the inside of the room, or you know, there's a wall mm. which you've got to look through. I think that's why. I think that's why because it's quite confusing to explain. I don't remember who suggested that, but I remember him saying that he brought it up before and no one could get around what he well, was... Well, perhaps mm. if you, like, make it so you can assign a weapons computer to um, a camera... Yeah. So when you get in that weapons computer, you, you go straight to that camera so you can yeah. see where you are. That's what we were thinking. We were thinking that if mm. you hit, like, C on a weapons computer and V on a camera, that camera wouldn't be available from the core. It would, it would only be available from that weapons computer if you actually got into it. Now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, like, I think I think that was the idea, because, you know, then you could have a weapons system like... Um, you could have bombs, you know, facing down. And then when you get into it, it's looking down from a camera that's facing down. You know what I mean? And there's nothing obstructing the view. Hmm. Yeah. I think it would just be it would just be cleaner, you know. It, even if the camera is just on one, just right in front of the weapons computer, and there's only two layers of hull, it would still be more elegant than what we have at the moment, which is sort of luck, really. Or they have to place their weapons computer so close to the edge of the ship that it's it's really vulnerable, you know, which you wouldn't normally have to do. But anyway, okay. So the last section. And welcome back, Yelby. You here? What's up? Right, I'm glad you can get back in time. Um, basically, what would we like to see procedurally generating in the universe? We've got here in bullet point factories, underground caves, lost civilizations, more cities, advanced cities which have daves and shops, like the advanced shop we have already, war zones, which I guess are as evidence of fighting, you know, wreck, lots of wrecked ships in one place. Maybe they took all of them out, out, I don't know. And then we've already had confirmed, we've got this a bullet for AI home sectors and bases. I think that's going to happen now, so, but yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so what do you think of those guys? Well... <laughs> Well, yeah. underground caves, well, you get caves anyway. We do, planets, we do. So, cross that off. Yeah. Factories, meh. Just build them yourselves, damn it. Stop being lazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lost civilizations. Well, you already get cities, but more cities. What does that even mean? As well, in advanced cities. Very. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, like, I would say, like, for more cities, just make them more varied. So maybe there's, like, because we've got a pyramid on the desert planet sometimes. We've got a city on the Terran planet sometimes there's the purple planet maybe there could be some kind of ancient ruin you or know? there could be some sort of aliens hive alien yeah. hive sort of or thing or an you alien know? hive yeah exactly that's born in critters in and <laughs> yeah like yeah like a xenomorph hive mm, oh, exactly that's beautiful all right and then um what about the other planet there's another one there's loads of them. There's the ice planet. Or you could have some sort of yeti city. <laughs> I don't <know>. Yetis. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Um, but yeah, so advanced cities. I mean, it'd be nice to see a city which had a whole bunch of pathfinding civilians. You know, people that lived in this universe other than players. You know, because we've got a Dave at the advanced shop. He's the only guy that lives in the universe right now. So, I mean, I'm yeah, not trying to... Yeah, we need more residents, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I'm not trying to turn it into an RPG. I'm just saying that if you had this advanced city, maybe you could have more than just a Dave. Maybe that's mm. where the lure could come in. You could custom script this agent that lives in this big sky tower or whatever. I don't know, but like a glass. To be honest, it might give know. something for people to fight over as well, because there would be these advanced cities. Perhaps they sell something that you can't get through normal trading guilds or something. 
Yeah, maybe it's or, the only way... And it's way... very hard to craft, perhaps. Yeah, maybe it's the only way to get the end game stuff. You have to trade with the advanced civilization. Who, and they could be human, you know what I mean? But this could be, you know, something that you've got to find. And once you've found it... could be, like, procedurally it... generated um, aliens as well, I guess. Hmm. With the actual advanced cities, so you won't get the same race going, Hey, we, we've crafted this on this planet as well, did you know? Yeah, true. So, like, different races would be more likely to craft different end-level stuff. And then their but shops would should be, be able to be able to craft it as well, but but these guys can sell it to you for an extortionate amount of money. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> so if you've managed to be that much of a pirate, <laughs> you can actually buy this stuff. I like that. All right, cool. Well, I think that's pretty much that. So um, thanks for tuning into the podcast, as always. And uh, we'll be coming back and seeing you again soon. So that was episode eight of Do You Even Star Maid? Make sure to come back and check us again soon. Thanks for listening and watching. See you next time.